Hello. Wilbur, what can I do for you? I'm I'm supposed to ask you if you want in on a new business proposition. I've always got a spare ear for that. Tell me about it. Death wants to offer live burials. What are live burials? You bury people, living people. That's complete nonsense. I know. How much capital does he need? But I thought you said the idea was ridiculous. That doesn't mean there isn't any money in it. Think about it. Death abandons his previous business model and strives aggressively into new markets. And I, as the widely recognized expert of the future, see excellent prospects for success. But who would want to be buried alive? No one. But that's not important. We'll get the money directly from the capital markets. Investors will be queuing up. Um. Okay. So, I can tell Death you'll provide him with financial backing. Of course, I'll come over this afternoon and discuss it all with him. In the meantime, I'll start feeding the rumor mill. Hmm. Okay then. I don't get it. Why give Death money when he'll never earn a single gold piece with his live burials? That's not the point. We'll sell the story, the vision. But sooner or later, people will realize what a stupid idea that is. Naturally, but that'll take time. First, we need a glossy prospectus with pretty coffins and some joint ventures that create media attention. Sign up some celebs to give testimonials. Then the operational losses won't trouble us so much. We spend loads of gold, and more and more fortune tellers will predict a good future for our company. Why should they? Because the shares they have in the company will then rise, and they'll not only make a profit but also prove that they were right. I didn't understand any of that. That's good. If everyone understood, who could I sell my fortune telling to? I'll just be going. I have seen that you are going to come back. See you then. What? What exactly are you doing there? What does it look like? I've dug a grave. With grandfather's old spade in my hand and father's top hat on my head, it's simply brilliant. I asked the wealthy showman about risk capital. He may want to join us. Excellent! It's going to be a success, I'm certain. There's a real gap in the market. Makes you wonder why no one thought of it before. I can think of a thousand good reasons right off. How are the trials going? So far, so good. It didn't take long to dig the grave. I've got the coffin here. Though of course, it doesn't meet the standards we're aiming for, but it's good enough for the trials. Certainly. Good. Then climb in. Hmm. It was your idea. You should have the honor of being the first to be buried. Oh, that's that's. So courteous of you. Credit where credit is due. All right then. I'm too long with the top hat on. Could you hold it for me? With pleasure. Very comfortable thus far. Now, pile the soil on top. Are you certain? Of course. Just do it. Fantastic. The darkness. The silence. You have to try this. We should have funeral music, and the customer should have his photo taken with me beforehand. Write that down, Wilbur. And we'll have canopies for the bereaved. Have you got that, Wilbur? Canopies and gun salutes. Cannons, Wilbur. We need cannons. I hope he's happy now.
Hello. Wilbur, what can I do for you? Look, here's the rabbit for the spell. And a white one at that. That's perfect. Now we just need the top hat. On my way. I have the top hat for the spell. I uh, had to pry it from death's icy grasp, so to speak. Well, at last we've got everything. Come over here. Put the top hat on the table. Put the rabbit in. Now I'm putting a black cloth into the hat. This on top and finished. As you can see, an empty top hat. But you have to do a lot of arm waving and the like. The audience mustn't be allowed to get a proper look at the hat. Then you say a few incantations and make a big to-do about it. You haven't got a pretty assistant, have you? Isn't that... Once the excitement has reached boiling point, then... Ta-da! You pull the rabbit out of the hat. But make sure the cloth stays in the hat. Otherwise, the whole trick is blown. Quite clever, isn't it? That's fraud. And it's not magic either. Um, of course not. But it looks like it. But, but, but I wanted to learn a real spell. Are you out of your mind? That takes months. I, I can't just swindle my way to my diploma with a trick like that. Excuse me, you said you wanted to get your mage degree, and you said you needed it quick. This is your only chance. Oh, what choice do I have? Good luck with the show. Excuse me, Master Teacher. What is it? I'd like to show you the trick. Uh, spell. I look forward to it. As you can see, the top hat is completely empty. <clears throat> Um, abracadabra. Bunny, are you okay? Fantastic. You've almost transformed the rabbit in the hat into a sheep. That's extraordinary. Almost impossible. There must be considerably more magic in you than I ever thought, Wilbur Weathervane. Oh, thank you. Well, I had a fantastic assistant. I'm speechless. You're the first gnome in centuries to become a graduate mage. And you've passed the exams quicker than anyone else in history. What's your secret? I believe I can do anything I want if I just believe in myself. Oh, really? You could fly like a bird just because you believe in yourself. Well, maybe not that. But that's exactly what you've done. You've achieved something impossible. Maybe I was lucky. Or it was predestined. As unbelievable as it is, you've passed all three exams. Wait. Mage degree for Wilbur Weathervane from the White Ridge Mountains. Oh. My brother won't believe his eyes. Your brother? The Archmage. The Archmage is your brother? Yes, of course. He always believed that our bleak fate would take a change for the better. And slowly, I'm beginning to believe that again, too. You've given me hope, Wilbur Weathervane. You know that? Nothing can stop you. You're a fine example to me. If there's anything I can do for you, come back. You have a friend in me. Oh. 
Now go. You've waited long enough. Give my brother what you came to give him. Mr. King, look, I'm a certified mage. I told you you'd do it. We're all so proud of you. Thanks. Our work is now done. We are all well fed. I think it's time to say goodbye. Oh, you want to leave for the country? That's right. But if you want to come and visit us, Master Wilbur Weathervane will always be welcomed by us rats. So long, Wilbur. See you soon. Hello, Mr. Shieldhand. Hello, Wilbur. What do you want? You there, town guard. Have a look at this. Effective immediately. So you may address me as Master Weathervane, and I wish to see the Archmage now. And, what is it? Why is this gnome wearing mage clothing? Your Honour, uh, this is Master Wilbur Weathervane, an accredited mage and therefore a member of your order. Nonsense. I know all the mages in the land. But, but it's true. I completed my degree today under your brother's tutelage, Master Marcus. That's impossible. I've no time for such absurdity. Take your leave, gnome. But I'm supposed to give you something. A ring. A ring? From whom? From a gremlin. Yesterday he landed right on my feet in the White Ridge Mountains. It gave me this ring and said that it could decide the course of the war. Hmm. Master Alistair, I turn to you in great haste as well as in great fear. I have made a discovery that could decide all of our fates. I know where the artifact of destiny is to be found. Your Serene Highness, you know the stories. A legendary artifact created by the Goddess of Destiny and Providence. An extraordinarily precious and dangerous thing. As good fortune is bestowed on its carrier, everything that he attempts succeeds. Everything that he desires, he receives. Everything bends to his will, always. It is a truly dreadful power, a God's power. Just imagine if this were to fall into the hands of the enemy. I have found that the artifact is hidden in a temple on a small island called Sordia. You must find it and bring it to safety. You must! Help us, Master Alistair. You're our only hope. That was him. That was the gremlin who was taken away by these evil types on a dragon. Shades? The Shadow Army has taken this gremlin prisoner? Sir, we have to send everything and everyone to this island. Every ship, every griffin, every... Enough! We have to behave inconspicuously. We don't know what information the Shades already have, and we mustn't help them get on the right track. No, sir. But if they have the gremlin, then it'll only be a matter of time until we... The island of Sordia? Where the devil is that? I've never heard of it. I'll be leaving the city for a few days. I have to do some research in the archives. But the Seastone archives have lots of- Silence, guard! I will send a group of trustworthy comrades to the island as soon as I've found it. And you, one word of this message, just one single word to anyone, and I'll grind you into a fine powder. Understand? O of course. Y understood, sir. Go. Leave me alone with the youngster. And don't let anybody up here, mage or not. Understood? Understood, sir. And you, Mr. Weather... thingy? You've done very well indeed. Weathervane, sir. Thank you. My granddad won't believe this when I tell him. That won't be possible for some time. You'll have to stay here and hold the fort. I want you to prepare for a small expedition. Find some companions. Two should be enough. You shall all go and fetch the artifact as soon as I have found the island. But 
when it comes to something as important as this, wouldn't it be better to send an experienced treasure hunter? Nonsense. No one knows you. You don't even exist as far as the enemy is concerned. You won't arouse any attention. That is our most important weapon in this matter. You'll be back long before the enemy even knows what's happening. But, uh, but I think... Enough said. I am the leader of the order and this is an order. Choose two accomplices and wait here for me. And don't talk to anyone about this. Dismissed. When... When will I be back? As soon as I can. But it might take a few days for me to find the island we're looking for. The gremlin told me that a book hidden in his secret cellar describes the way to the artifact's location. Really? That's good to know. That went better than I had hoped for. A fiendish plan, Mancus. Well done! Now you know where the artifact is hidden, and the real Archmage will remain out of your tentacles for as long as I need. Mother will keep him busy. She's summoned up all of her dark magic. When he returns, you will have the artifact of divine fate in your hands at last. And Seastone will burn, just like every other Alliance town. <laughs> oh, man. Yesterday I was sweeping floors and today I'm a certified mage and part of the greatest adventure since Nightilo fought the Broccoli Monster. An artifact that grunts unlimited power. Hopefully the Shades never get wind of it. In their hands something like that would definitely mean the end of the world. But the Archmage won't let it come to that. I'll find myself two companions and wait here for him. By the gods, that's a female orc, here, in the human town, and she's taken one of them prisoner. I must notify the town guard right away, and Master Marcus. Together we must fight to the last drop of blood, and... I can hear you! Stay where you are. I'm, uh... I'm a mage. So I see. A, a dangerous battle mage. Now that, on to the hand, I find doubtful. Who... who are you? What do you want here, and how did you get here? A lot of questions. Give me one good reason why I should answer them. Her name is Elizabeth. She's come here for the annual beauty contest and has brought a golden pegasus with her. He's called Bob. Nice to meet you, Elizabeth. My name is Wilbur. I am a bounty hunter and just passing through. Uh, are bounty hunters allowed to simply tie up you? Certainly. Bounty hunters and merchants are neutral in this war. Nobody wanted the bounty hunters. I'm just waiting for Bill the Merchant who has my provisions. Then I'm on my way. I have no idea what's going on here, but the airship could be exactly what I need for my expedition. Who did you just speak to? Uh, to no one, really. So your name isn't Elizabeth? I am known as Mazaz. Or Sugar Lips, Greeny, or just Oi, you fella! And she is one lousy bounty hunter. That's right. I only catch imbeciles. Those who are even more stupid than me. Where are you taking your, your, your prisoners? That's none of your business, dwarf. They know, and that's enough. I'm not a dwarf, I'm a gnome. Too right, Shorty. Don't take any nonsense. Turn her into a sheep. I can only transform rabbits into a kind of a sheep. Great, that's helpful. I, I have to go. If you see the merchant, can you tell him that I'll rip his ears off if he doesn't turn up here soon? A large net. Might be a fishing net, or maybe one of those cargo nets. A coiled rope. It's been used a lot. Hey! What do you think you're doing there? That's my rope. Your rope? It belongs to the Mary and is therefore my rope. Perhaps 
Perhaps you haven't quite understood this yet. The ship no longer belongs to you. It now belongs to me. Over my dead body. Aye. Um, um, well, no matter who the rope belongs to, it, it's not mine. Sorry. A bale of cargo. Looks heavy. Maybe compressed cotton or the like. It's a long way down beneath the plank. You wouldn't catch me standing on it. As someone who comes from the mountains, I'm not really an expert on ships, but that's called a thingy. Ooh! Hi. I'm Wilbur. Who are you? Someone with a tiny problem, as you can see. Could you do me a favor and whack that green lady over the head? Come on, Nate. I'm only doing my job here. I know the job market's tough, but yours is going to cost me my neck. Undoubtedly. Are you a pirate or something? No. Yes. Well, I have been called that occasionally, but I'm just about as much of a pirate as Mazaz here is a ballet dancer. I'm the captain of this proud ship, the Mary. I'm a freelance treasure hunter. You're a swindler. And you're a terrible ballet dancer. I like ballet. You're a professional treasure hunter. So you know your way around sunken temples and the like. Of course. I have traveled all across the skies to the ends of the earth. I've fought cyclops and seen things that a man probably shouldn't have. Such as Mazaz here, for example. Suppose I needed to travel to a certain island, and I could show you the island on a map. Could you bring me there? Well, apart from the fact that I'm sitting here in a cage, then sure. Then we'll just have to free you. <clears throat> Hello. I still happen to be here. What's that got to do with it? Hmm. See you later. Take care, Shorty. Captain Nate is a treasure hunter. And he has his own ship. Someone like him would be perfect for my team. But how do I get past that orc lady? And all on my own? I've never seen a creature like that before. It's similar to the demon from the inn. Maybe it's just an animal. Shield hand is one of these down at the gate too. I guess dozens of My guards fault. used to patrol the They town. gave me the wrong coordinates. The coordinates were correct. Yeah, great. Some kind of weird orc system. Look at me. Do I look like an orc? Maybe they should have given me the coordinates for a human navigation system. Perhaps you could have simply listened that won't work. while the things were would being notice. explained to you at great length. I've been a captain for 15 years. I don't need things explained to me. Quite obviously you do. At the very least, you might have noticed that it was not a stinking headquarters when you landed in the wedding cake. The bridesmaid looked pretty suspect. Ah, so that was why you decided to strip search them, was it? The pillar holds up this little roof. It looks pretty strong. Ooh, that is um, very uh, interesting. Hmm, there's something on top of that cabinet. Some papers of some sort. Maps, maybe. That's too high, I can't reach. Dad always says, what you don't have in your head, you'd better have in your books. I would have thought there'd be more books, yeah? No wonder the Archmage has gone elsewhere to seek information. That's a telescope. Grandad has one. The question is, is it a masterpiece of technology or magic? Or perhaps both? How does the Archmage get up there? Maybe it's a floating chair. That is probably the thickest book I've ever seen. It says Encyclopedia Fantastica here. Hmm. Fantastic knowledge in just one volume. 
The strange thing is that most of the pages are completely blank. I mean, our world isn't that uninteresting. Now that's what I call magic. Fantastic. A huge map of the entire country, and I've only seen a tiny corner of it to date. Wow! No idea what these globes are supposed to represent, but they're gorgeous. The flower keeps floating away from me. Maybe it's shy. Strange idea, stretching a map over a globe like that. How are you supposed to use it? But I still can't let you go up, my lovely. I will say it once more. I have to give the Archmage a book. It's important. I don't know anything about a book. And believe me, whatever the Archmage is up to, it's more important than your stupid book. But... End of discussion. Only graduate mages or people with an invitation from the Archmage can go into the tower. And to be precise, I don't see any of those at the moment, sorry. Hello. Hmm. Hi. You're an elf, right? Indeed. And you are a kind of wood goblin? I'm a gnome. Wilbur Weathervin. Master Wilbur Weathervin. Pleased to meet you. You're a mage? With diploma. Then you can go into the upper town and into the mage tower. That's exactly where I've just come from. Could you take me up there? Who are you? My name is Ivadora Eleonora Clarissa, Princess of Silverwood. Ooh, and you're a real princess from Miss from Silverwood. Call me Ivo. He's called Cheap Cheap. I overheard you talking to the city guard about a book. Do you need to take it to the Archmage? I have to. It's very important. Could it be that you got this book from a gremlin secret seller? A gremlin who shortly before had been ejected over the White Ridge Mountains. Get out of my brain, you mage! You almost dropped the professor on my head. He sent me here with a secret message for the Archmage. Oh, were you able to bring him the news? Yes, it was very disquieting. I believe that the book you're carrying explains just where an extremely powerful artifact can be found. Yeah, the gremlin did hint at something of that sort. He was very concerned. He's got every reason to be. The Archmage is gone. He's trying to find out exactly where the artifact is hidden. And then I'm supposed to go get it, quietly and secretly, along with two friends. But it's here. This book tells us where the artifact can be found. Unfortunately, the Archmage doesn't know that. This whole story is too much for one norm. I think we should work together. I should really be at home in the elf burrow listening to Uncle Ignatio droning on. I am in enough trouble already. Don't you understand? This book explains the exact location of the artifact of divine power. That's precisely the information the Archmage is looking for. Then take the book and wait for him here. And if the shades are faster than we are? What if they manage to extract the information from the old gnome before the Archmage returns? And what then? Are we to fight the Shades single-handed? And what are we talking about here, by the way? What is it that the Shadow Army want to get their hands on? I can't tell you that here. How about this? I'll get you into the Mage Tower somehow, and there I'll show you the Professor's message and... And then I can decide whether I'm in or not. It's a deal. I'll be back. And I will wait. Master Marcus, you'll never believe this, but... Master Marcus, hello? Hmm, he's not here. <laughs> 